Hello, my name is Zebulon Hart. Uh, this video serves as an overview of the second project, the final project, for the Mining 535 Reclamation course for spring of 2021. Uh, this video is being completed as per the requirements uh, of the University Scholars Program for an additional assignment. Uh, and uh, this video will be covering three primary topics. Um, these topics parallel the requirements of the project itself, which was to complete, uh, firstly, peak flow modeling for a subset of sub-watersheds, followed by diversion design, and lastly, uh, pond design for each of these sub-watersheds. My group was responsible for uh, analyzing six sub-watersheds because we were a group of three individuals, and we'll get into that now. The first major work area in completing this project related to getting everything into the modeling software, which of course is HEC HMS. In order to do this, we needed to have an idea of what sub-watersheds we would be evaluating. Um, and for our group, again, we were a group of three people, each person responsible for two sub-watersheds, so we needed a total of six sub-watersheds. Um, and, uh, and so that's effectively uh, what, we, what we found. Um, we were given a number of options. We chose subbasins A, C, D, I, Q, and R. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the way that these are loaded in here is in CAD, uh, you can uh, export a shape file of the boundary of each of these sub watersheds and then import it into HEC here. And, and that's what's been done. Uh, then, using the subbasin creation tool, uh, each of the subbasins has been assigned, oh, I'm dragging that, has been assigned. Um, a, a sub basin and uh, and the characteristics of each of those sub basins uh, has been assigned as well. Uh, for example, their area in square miles, as well as a curve number that is associated with each of them. In this case, this is pre-mining, um, so we're going on rather steep terrain, so a curve number of 73 seems quite reasonable. Um, and, and in any case, once that's completed, you have your basin model set up, one for pre and one for the worst case scenario. And in our instance, we we the, the definition of worst case scenario was not provided, so we extrapolated that perhaps this could mean post mining but pre reclamation. So perhaps quite a bit of exposed bedrock, not a lot of vegetation, and so the potential for quite a bit of runoff. Once your basin models are set up, set up a meteorological model. Uh, and uh, in this case, we were specifically requested to cover 10 year, 24 hour storm and a 25 year, 24 hour storm. Uh, set up a hypothetical storm uh, type model. Um, and these point depth values were gotten from the NOAA website, specifically values for Jackson, Kentucky, because this operation is in Breathitt County. And uh, so these values are had for both uh, hypothetical storms. And finally, the last thing is set up when doing this peak flow modeling are the, are the control specifications. And uh, once we set up the control specifications, we could go in and we could compute everything. Um, for example, we could just run this one quite quickly. Once it runs, we can jump over to results and take a look at the global summary. And you, and you can see here that for each of the sub-basins, uh, we have a peak dis discharge value that the software will provide. So the next step in completion of the final project related to diversion design. Now, of course, as rain falls on a given area, especially an area that is as uh, ridged and steep as you know Breathitt County is, um, water will be somewhat contained uh, or constrained within the ridge lines of its given watershed. But when that water reaches the foot of the watershed, um, I suppose theoretically go any number of directions. Ideally, when going through and doing this reclamation design, we want to control where this water goes so that we can limit discharge ideally to no more than what the uh, discharge would have been in, in the pre-mining condition. Now this, of course, is, is post-mining is what we're discussing. Um, <clears throat> and so in order to facilitate or be able to handle the amount of runoff, uh, we have to specifically tailor our, our uh, diversion ditch geometry and, and, and volume to handle the kind of discharge that we can expect to, to have. And so um, the reason that you do peak discharge or peak flow modeling first is because that impacts these geometries. You can see that we have an example of the peak flow 
uh, right over here. And then we can get into doing the design of the ditch for each of the sub basins. Uh, and uh, we would start off, for instance, with a limiting velocity. Um, this is going to be a, a these these values can be found in limiting velocity tables, and it's it's a uh, function of the competency of the ditch material. Um, from there, in conjunction with the peak discharge value, you calculate your required area, your required ditch area. And then from uh, once you have your required ditch area, once that is known, you can begin to vary other variables to find your design depth. And this can be achieved with solver um, in, in the Excel suite. And so that is what has been done for each of the individual sub-basins. And as you can see in our report, we show what those um, dimensions are uh, on an example diversion ditch cross-section. The final step in completing our project involved returning to HEC HMS to design or at least trial um, pond capacity and overall pond design. So once we have our diversions in place, we have an idea of how they're going to flow into a pond, we need to begin to evaluate what a pond will look like. So we, we have inflow parameters for a pond, we also need outflow parameters for a pond. And in this instance, uh, we we decided to use trickle tubes. So one thing I'm not going to show just for the sake of time, because it's a very rudimentary calculation that can be done in Excel, is designing a trickle tube for one of these ponds as for, for, for discharge purposes. Um, and so uh, once, uh, let, Based off of the, the peak flow values for each watershed, you can design a trickle tube diameter, and then you can get into designing the pond. So the way that is done is, like I said, by, by revisit, revisiting a, a HEC HMS. So here we are. Um, and the first, first things first, we're going to go back to basin models, and we need to add something to each of the basin models. Um, specifically, we need to add reservoirs, which can be achieved with the uh, reservoir creation tool. Each of these reservoirs, um, has an outlet and a spillway. And uh, the, the outlets, when we begin to design them, th these inlet elevations and these exit uh, or outlet elevations, they're all relative. Um, and so the reason that our values are so low is because that was convenient for our calculation purposes. Um, they don't reflect the actual um, terrain elevation as far as, you know, compared to mean sea level and that type of stuff, uh, simply because there's, there's no reason to... In, for our purposes to actually do that. Um, and again, the same thing goes for a spillway height. Um, so this is done for each of the reservoirs uh, in each of the sub-basins. Once that's in place, we need one more parameter in place before we can really start to uh, run a computation on this and, and see what our results are. And that's to come in and basically tell the software what our pond looks like, what is the general design of the pond, uh, which is done here. And, and the way this, this is spelled out, it's kind of interesting, is uh, every elevation has an associated area. So um, this for us was one of the big parameters that we could play around with to try and get um, an optimal discharge from our ponds. At the end of the day, the point of this pond is to limit the amount of discharge that immediately leaves the site during one of these storm events. You know, Mining removes the ability of uh, removes soil. Um, it removes the ability the ability of the land to actually absorb much water, and so you get much more runoff. So we need something that can catch that water and let it out in a metered fashion, which is what the the diversions in the pond does for us. And when we run simulation on some of these, um, for instance, we can run test two here. This was us playing around trying to get things, you know, sort of uh, sided in, if you will. Um, what we find, I'll run it quite quickly here. Uh, what we find is that um, the sub basin Q peak discharge, 95.9 uh, cubic feet per second. This is a bit overkill. Again, this is not what our final value is, but it's an example of how the pond can actually um, catch and retain quite a bit of that flow and, and limit the amount uh, of discharge in any given period of time. And so <clears throat> once this step is complete here in HEC HMS, and again, that's, 
that test too is simply us trying to get a feel for the software. Um, once that test is complete, we can then go to the Excel sheet, for instance, or into CAD and actually draw the pond, which you can see our uh, pond designs in the uh, report.